Hello, everyone. Welcome to lesson 10 of Oxford Word Skills Intermediate Book. In this one, we're going to talk about two different things weddings and funerals. So, if you do not know about these two, we're going to do this together and we're going to learn a lot of words that are pretty much awesome and we're going to use those words in everyday speech. Stay tuned, stay with me. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Let's do this. Now, in this lesson, the first word that we come across is the word choose. You got to get yourself familiar with all different parts of this word. So we say, I choose something and the past tense of this verb is chose. I chose the ring for wedding or engagement. And the past participle form of this verb is chosen. He was chosen as the groom or he was chosen as bridesmaid. The word that we have here is ceremony. A ceremony refers to a public event and normally that's a formal one. Whenever you try to put some people together, you invite them to attend some sort of a formal meeting normally for some reason. It's not like they got to take part in conversations or anything. They just got to be there and show their support. That's a ceremony. And normally the ceremony is about some specific thing. It's got a reason that people are there. So I can say that my family are organizing some traditional ceremony and all my relatives are invited. Now, if we're talking about weddings, we can have a religious ceremony. A religious ceremony normally takes place inside a church or a mosque, somewhere that is somehow connected to the religion. That is what we call religious ceremonies. Now, I can use it in a sentence like, many people these days do not tend to have religious ceremonies. Now, I got to get you familiar with the opposite of religious ceremony, which is civil ceremony. It's the exact opposite. If there is a wedding and the couple decide not to hold that ceremony, the ceremony, the wedding ceremony, actually inside a church, then they're probably having a civil ceremony, civil ceremony. After a lot of discussion, they decided that they were going to have a civil ceremony, not a religious one. I got to tell you a couple of pointers about the word getting married. These two words, getting married. We normally say someone gets married to someone. The thing here is that I hear lots of people saying someone gets married with someone, which is totally wrong. Now, I want you to pay attention to the preposition that I'm using with this word. Get married to someone. Or if I'm just using the verb form of the word marry, then I don't need a preposition at all. I can simply say he married her without any specific preposition. And it is correct. Now, after the bride and the groom take their vows and they have the ceremony, whether that's in a church or not, then they're going to have a wedding reception. There will be a wedding reception. And what does that mean? The wedding reception is a little bit different than the ceremony. The ceremony includes the rituals, but the reception is the party or and the meal after the ceremony. People are probably having fun and uh, they're going to dance. They're going to have a meal probably and party. That is the reception. In an example, it would sound like, oh, I didn't really like the ceremony. It was really boring. But on the contrary, the reception was awesome. We had a lot of fun. Now, I can talk about something that is common in a family or it has been done in a family for a long time. That is called a tradition. 
Now, the adjective form of that noun is traditional. I can say that it is traditional in my family for, let's say, the groom's father to make a speech in the ceremony. Make a speech, that means to talk. Talk about, of course, the thing that is going on, which is the wedding. And um, you got to pay attention to the way that you're using the word tradition or traditional. Now, this phrase is really common and I'm sure that you've seen it and heard it actually in lots of movies. That is to drink or make a toast. To drink or make a toast means that people raise their glasses of wine and they wish someone success, well-being and health. And that it, this is also a common part of a wedding, I guess. So the people who are kind of related to the bride and the groom, uh, they make a toast and they start, you know, like uh, making a speech. They talk about uh, the couple actually and they wish them well. That's making a toast or drinking a toast. Now, if you want to say good things about something that is happening to someone, you can use the word wish like this. I wish you something. I wish you happiness. I wish you success. I wish you success and prosperity. I wish you all the best things in the world. Now, the next word that you got to know is the word anniversary. Anniversary is the annual reminder of something that happened the previous year. Now, if I get married on this day, next year, this day would be my anniversary. And I normally have to celebrate it with my wife. So keep that in mind. It's an anniversary. And it's not just about weddings. It could also be about funerals where, you know, like somebody kind of passed away. They could also have an anniversary for that. In a sentence, it's going to sound like this. Um, I got to think of a good gift to buy for my wife. Tomorrow is our anniversary. And in case you don't know, this one is bride and this one is groom. Okay, now let's talk about the sad part of life. Or maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, we're going to talk about the part that somebody dies. Now, the first distinction that I have to make is among these three words. Die, dead, and death. Well, die is the verb. I can say, he died last year. Or it's hard for people to die. Die, like a verb. Now, next one is death. Death is a noun. I got to use it as a noun. Death can come in different forms. Sometimes people have emotional death. Death as a noun is used like that. And finally, we have the word dead. This is an adjective. And I guess you know how to use an adjective. I don't want to talk about my grandfather. He's dead. He is dead. Do you see I'm using the word dead after is, which is a to be verb. Two words here. Widow and widower. A widow refers to a woman whose husband has died. And as you can imagine and guess, a widower is quite the exact opposite. A man whose wife has died. Now, the next word is funeral. It's the type of ceremony that people hold for someone who's dead and right after their death, actually, in a church or somewhere. It's a funeral. Now, pay attention to this example. I did not attend his funeral because I was quite sick. I did not attend his funeral. Or in another example, I can say, Hey, are you going to Mark's funeral tomorrow? Are you going to Mark's funeral? Next word is to bury someone. To bury someone or something means to put that thing or that person in the ground. If we're talking about a person, normally it's after they die. So it's um, like they're going to bury him on Thursday. 
and the noun form of it is burial. The burial is on Thursday. Bury, burial. Now, some people decide not to bury their dead ones. They normally decide to burn them. And they will be given the ashes of that person who was just burnt. So this is called cremation. And the person who is dead, obviously, and undergoes that process is cremated. Cremation and cremate. So Jack decided in his will not to be buried, but cremated. Next word is will. Do not make the mistake of thinking that this is the auxiliary verb that talks about the future. No, a will here is a noun and it refers to a document that you leave behind and after you die, you're going to determine who is going to inherit your money or your property, whatever you're leaving behind. That is a will. I can say, as an example, he left his sister $1 million in his will. He left his sister $1 million in his will in his will. Now, this word is really important, that is inherit. When you inherit something from someone, basically, it means that you receive those items or money or whatever it is after they die. That is what you inherit. You can inherit property, you can inherit money, and whatever thing that you inherit is called inheritance. So the noun form of it is inheritance. He inherited a billion dollar mansion after his grandfather passed away. All right, guys. I hope that you learned the words that we talked about. Make sure that you make sentences with them. That's what helps you remember them later on. And uh, I'm going to be back with you with another video about this book again. And I hope that you tune in. And do not forget to subscribe. Love y'all. Take care.